Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal in our weekly segment with Joanna Jubilus of the Belmont Citizen Herald, which you can find online at belmont.wickedlocal.com. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So welcome, Joanna. It's great to see you again. Great to see you too, Mike. We have three contested races for Belmont's April townwide election. What can you tell us? That always brings a smile to my face when there's races, because truthfully, it's really boring when you're covering elections and there are no races. So that's why I have a smile on my face. Okay. So yes, three contested races. The deadline to file nomination papers was February 16th. And what we have is a school committee race, five candidates running for two three-year seats. We have incumbents, Tara Donner and Evelyn Gomez running for re-election to their seats. And then we have newcomers, three of them, Megan Moriarty, Jamal Saye, and Timothy Flood. And Timothy Flood may sound familiar to people because he actually ran for select board against Roy Epstein and Jesse Bennett in 2019. Okay. That's why it may sound familiar to people. And then we also have a housing authority race. We have Ann Mann, incumbent, running for re-election to her five-year seat. And then we have newcomer, who's not really a newcomer, but she is a newcomer for this race, Thomasina Olson. She's running for the five-year seat as well. And there's only one five-year seat. That's why that's a race. But Tommy, I say, is not a newcomer because she's actually served on the housing authority in the past. She served from 2016 to 2019. And in 2019, she lost in the race uh, against Cassandra Page, who won the seat in 2019. But she's okay. not giving up and she's trying again. And so that'll be exciting. And then we have a, a Board of Health race. And this was a very last minute uh, race. We did not find out about it really until the 16th because, well, the, the newcomer candidate, which is Dr. Adrian Allen, she's a local Belmont, she's a physician who lives in Belmont. She, she actually practices in the North Shore. She pulled papers the Friday before they were due. And then she filed them that Tuesday. So she is a newcomer and she's running against incumbent Stephen Fiore, who's an attorney, and he is running for re-election to his three-year seat. He's served one term, he wants to serve another term. And then we have, um, so those are the races. We, we actually have, then we have the, the yes and the no campaigns for the override, so I consider that kind of a race. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, who's going to win that one? And then we have um, town meeting races in precincts three, five, and six. It's really nice to see so many people who want to run. And from what I understand, I'm waiting to get the numbers from our town clerk, Ellen Cushman. Um, there are a lot of newcomers running for town meeting, which I find very uh, interesting. And I want to find out um, how many and if it's like the most in history, in her knowledge, which I'm, I'm waiting to find out. And then we have we have uncontested races, which I think are worth mentioning. We have a former select board member, Mark Palillo, he served he, he served three terms. He, he ended his service two years ago. He's coming back. He's running for select board again, and he's running uncontested. So that's Mark Palillo. Okay. And we have um, someone who might sound familiar to people who've served on the planning board for many years. His name's Charles Clark, and he is running for board of assessors. He, he's taken a little bit of a hiatus. Um, but he's coming back. He said he's ready to serve the town again. And he has experience as an, as an appraiser. So he would be very, uh, very appropriate for the Board of Assessors. And then we have Mike Widmer running for town moderator unopposed. Ellen O'Brien Cushman, she's running for Board of Cemetery Commissioners. And the library trustees, uh, there are two seats and incumbents are running for those, Elaine Allegood and Corrine Umstead. And then Sarah Billado, she's a newcomer. She's running uncontested for the four-year housing authority seat. And that's a wrap. On the okay, way. well, so <laughs> not to wrap too quickly, though, Joanna, can you tell us anything oh, yes. about the debates that are being organized for the competitive town races? Yes, I'm excited to say that I'm working with Belmont Media Center to plan four debates, actually. Four Belmont Buzz debates. There are two taking place on the night of March 5th, starting at six o'clock with the school committee debate. 
and then followed by the housing authority debate. And then on March 12th, we will have an override debate and that will be followed by a board of health debate. I'm excited about those. So, so reserve on your calendar, uh, March 5th and March 12th, beginning at 6 p.m. for some exciting debates. Sounds good. Uh, so, so Monday night, the select board held an interesting meeting. It was a public forum on a proposed leaf blower control bylaw for Belmont. Maybe not something that we're thinking about when a lot of people are still thinking about snow throwers, but apparent, apparently it's, um, it's something that, that a lot of people are talking about. Yes, and in fact, debating about, while we're on the subject of debates, this forum that was held on the, the 22nd was like a two hour long debate on leaf blowers between the, the people who like using them, including many residents, in, including like Tom C Caputo and Jeff Lubian. Jeff serves on the Warren Committee, you know him. Tom is a mm -hmm. select board member, they own gas leaf blowers. Um, and they spoke, uh, well, Tom didn't, but Jeff said, you know, I really like <laughs> using my gas leaf blower. I don't wanna have any limitations. Um, and as far as uh, landscapers, they, they were, uh, they're upset because, so this, this is there's a proposed bylaw draft that they were hoping to bring to town meeting. But after this two hour long debate of a forum, it's not going anywhere for a while. And it could take possibly as long as the noise bylaw took to draft. It actually, that actually took three years to draft, believe it or not. So they're not going to rush it. They, they had this two hour forum and I'll tell you what people were, were concerned about and I'll tell you what they're gonna do next. So the, the bylaw limits um, the usage of gas leaf blowers. You cannot use them at all between June 1st and August 31st if this bylaw was to pass. That wasn't necessarily a problem for landscapers. Um, the problem for landscapers and even a lot of residents was the hours, the limitation on the hours of usage. So the bylaw was proposing 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekdays, and then um, weekends would be like nine to six weekends and holidays. So landscapers were like, you know, this limits the number of hours we can work. So that's a problem. And then a lot of people who work full-time jobs said, you know, I, I do my yard work on the weekends and holidays and, and I need more time. Um, so that was interesting to hear. And then a lot of people said well, the electric leaf blowers, you have to keep recharging them. They're not as good as the, the gas ones. Um, so that's, that's a problem. They're also more expensive. And, you know, there's, they're limiting how many, how many leaf blowers you can use depending on the size of your yard. Okay. So, and, that, and those would be electric, the backpack style uh, electric leaf blowers. Um, they want to limit depending on the size of your yard to, to maybe four or three. So it all depends on your yard. So th those are the concerns people have. The other concerns for people who are um, anti-leaf blower, teens are not getting enough sleep. They need their sleep, Mike. You know, you and I both have teens, right? Um, well, sure, sure. A lot of people feel, well, this is only a problem now because of the pandemic and people are working from home. It won't be a problem when things get back to normal, right? So basically the outcome of the forum is no community consensus. If this goes to town meeting, it'll probably be debated for two hours there as well with still no consensus. Of well, so just to be clear, Joanna, is this yeah. is this not going to town meeting this this spring yeah. or definitely or, not? No, it's not. Definitely, definitely not. not. What's what's going to happen is the select board will be discussing what to do next. Um, it's a possibility that they will put together a subcommittee to study this like a working group to study the issue and then make recommendations. That's what it looks like will be happening. So stay tuned for more on that. Okay. Well, so we have some good news about Belmont Manor, I understand. Very good news. Very good news. Uh, I, I did a story on Belmont Manor um, when they were finally coming out of their darkest hour. And that was, um, you know, between mid-March and early June, they, they lost uh, at least 50 patients to COVID-19. And they're happy to say that since the spring, they haven't had a single COVID-19 case. So, you know, since, since around June, they've gotten things under control. 
They, they have more testing available to them. They even have an on-site machine that they can do rapid testing and get the results right away. They have plenty of PPE now. And what's really great is that 98% of the residents have been vaccinated through the federal pharmacy program and um, about 80% of the staff have been vaccinated. So they've had three clinics between December and, and February. So Stuart Carger, whose family founded the nursing home, Belmont Manor, uh, in 1967. He is um, feeling good about things, although he said he said there's still a long tunnel, but he sees a light at the end. That's that's exactly what what he said. And um, you know they're very strict about protocols for visitors, protocols for new patients, and they're they're you know that's what's helping to prevent more COVID cases from coming, but it was really bad. They, we lost the most people in Belmont through Belmont Manor due to COVID. Yeah. It's the biggest, it's the biggest, um, it's the biggest chunk of our numbers really. Uh, yes. And a lot of those patients, you know, keep in mind did have do not resuscitate orders. Mm. I, I actually, I can, I can honestly say, and I, I'm happy to say there's some good news. Uh, my 99 year old neighbor survived COVID. Well, that's excellent. Yes. All right, Joanna. Well, thank you so much for the updates and the positive, the positive news about Belmont Manor. And we will talk with you next time.